On the 12th of July, 2002, westracing.com was updated with an image. Introducing a new concept in motorsport simulation. Auspicious enough, but the world was introduced to racing legends, a racing simulator aiming to be a system that expands and evolves with you, your interests, and your computer. Coupled with a stunning render of a 1969 High Wing Lotus 49B, sim racers around the world hopes and dreams seemed within grasp. The future of racing simulation was here. Or was it? The 1990s were a magical time for racing simulators. Each year a new simulation was on the horizon and brought more to the table. More cars and tracks, better physics, and most of all, stunning graphics. In a short span of years, simulators went from crude representations to a dazzling reality. Although the West Racing site was revamped in July of 2002, those in the sim racing community were long familiar with the West Brothers. Chris and Tony West were two software developers out of the UK. Beginning in the late 80s with action titles such as 007 License to Kill, published by Domark in 1989, the West Brothers had a pedigree in game development. Working for the developer Vivid Image, they had a hand in the quite successful arcade racer, Street Racing, published by Ubisoft in 1994. But despite the success, the West Brothers were annoyed with development studios and publishers, taking all the credit and profiting from their work. They wanted to develop something of their own, something which captured more their passion for racing. Unveiled at E3 2000, the West Brothers showed their promising sim, World Sports Cars, backed by Empire Interactive. Featuring fully modeled suspension, mechanical wear, dynamic sounds, and a sophisticated tire model, the sim was packed with features many could only dream of. Chris and Tony West were extremely passionate, and many were overtaken with their enthusiasm. It is this passion and perfectionism which became their signature. However, Empire Interactive was not as keen about their perfection. They were a big studio with tight deadlines, and Chris and Tony West were repeatedly missing them. Seemingly overnight, Empire took away their project and handed it off to Razorworks, a studio not known for racing, but for Apache flight simulators. Chris and Tony West were left with nothing of their treasured sim. At the hand of Razorworks, World Sports Cars eventually saw the light of day and was published as Total Immersion Racing in 2002. It enjoyed mediocre reviews. With their project taken away, many expected that to be the last they heard of the West Brothers. But they were not done yet. Within a couple of months, in early 2002, westbrothers.com site displayed a coming soon message with a quote from Steve McQueen in The Great Escape. There's something coming. I can feel it and it's coming right around the corner at me. Something was coming, indeed. By July, they had launched a new website, first displaying the name Racing Legends. Upon entering the site, sim racers around the world drooled at the display of complex polygon renders of a Lotus 49. Complete with a physical user manual, the West Racing team explained their vision for selling cars as packs, creating a dream simulation of everything world sports cars would be but more. 
each pack coming with detailed information, allowing the simmer to feel as if they were taking part in owning the car itself. The West Brothers wanted you to be a racer. Sure, it would have been identical to the myriad of other Lotus 49Bs on everyone's hard drive, but yours would have a unique serial number, a log of practices and events driven in, a custom paint scheme, and even mechanical wear from event to event. Word of the new site quickly spread. Popular sim racing news site Black Hole Motorsports published a headline, What does this mean? Will WSC turn into a Formula One simulation? I guess we'll have to wait and see. The community began to speculate at the direction change. Grand Prix Legends had been launched in the fall of 1998, and although it was considered the pinnacle of hardcore simulations, it had not sold well. The West Brothers' direction of embracing historical racing seemed no accident. They wanted to attract the hardest of hardcore racers from real and the sim world. As the community celebrated the exciting news, a clever member of Black Hole typed slash forum on the end of the West Racing URL and discovered the West Brothers private message board. The forum contained conversations between the West Brothers inner circle. Plans were revealed for a trip to the 2002 Goodwood Festival of Speed, where more information on the simulation would be shared. The West Brothers reacted quickly and decided to embrace the public forum. What was an accident turned into a vibrant community with hundreds of posts a day speculating on the new sim. It became a great free marketing tool. At the Goodwood Festival of Speed, the West handed out marketing materials to event attendees. Perhaps the problem with Grand Prix Legends was that real historical racing enthusiasts had not yet discovered the joys of simulation racing. These physical promotional materials hoped to draw in the real world car group for their hardcore simulation. With anticipation and speculation at a fever pitch, the West began making what would become the core aspect of their site, blog updates. On the 8th of August, 2002, Tony shared the first shots of a test track, which would be the initial track for the sim, a fictional circuit with fast, sweeping corners circling a lake. And on the 27th of August, Tony shared additional shots of the track's pit lane and trackside object renders. They also gave the track a name, West Lake. The blog itself was written in a casual style. Those who read it felt connected to the West Brothers and their project. They felt like two guys from the sim racing community making a sim for the rest of us, away from the pressures of corporations and more importantly, to those pressures and deadlines. They were free to develop what we and they both wanted. The community was with the West Brothers and racing legends. On the 17th of September, 2002, the blog was updated with a different kind of message. Tony shared news of a store launching soon that will sell hats, t-shirts, sweaters, and even an embroidered teddy bear. Tony addressed the reason for the store in the same blog post citing, the reason for the shop is very straightforward. We need to raise some money to be able to continue developing racing legends. To this date, the project has been entirely funded by ourselves, but I'm afraid it cannot continue for much longer. All proceeds from the shop will go directly to funding the development of racing legends. As many of you know, we have chosen not to use a publisher for racing legends, as doing so would compromise the project. The community balked. Just a few months after the launch of the site and a trickling of artwork, but no news of a release date or even a demo, the racing legends team was already asking for money. Tony followed up the next day, September 18th, with a statement totally reversing his claim the day prior. Racing Legends is in no way dependent upon the success of this online shop. We had thought that any money raised from the online shop could be used to upgrade our equipment and software and possibly employ a couple of people to relieve some of the workload, especially day-to-day -day running of the company. We can do these things without the extra source of income, and this is where the shop comes in. Tony also addressed news on the beta or demo version of Racing Legends. 
the beta version of Racing Legends will not be available before the end of the year. It seems a large number of you are expecting the shop to feature said beta. We really have no idea where that rumor came from, but we feel it's best to put the matter straight on this issue. Hopefully this will save a lot of you wasting time coming to the site expecting to download the beta. The community became fractured at these words. Some proclaimed the sim was dead and the West were full of it. Others stood by the West and happily readied their credit cards for the day the store would open. But all had the questions. How strapped for cash were the West really? Could the sim continue development into the next year? Finally, on October 1st, new news, and more importantly, new visuals were added to the blog, a return to business as usual. Perhaps the online store was a small blip to be forgotten. This time, Tony added updates with some suspiciously non-Lotus car parts. The vision was coming together. At the time, no one knew for sure, but it was made clear that a Ferrari 312P sports car was to be included alongside the venerable Lotus 49. More classics for the community to drool over. It was also announced that physics mathematician Dr. Gregor Vabel was joining the West. The team was now up to three, with Tony working on modeling and marketing, Chris working away at coding and graphics and software engines, and Gregor, ensuring the cars really did feel as good as they claimed. Things seemed to be headed in a better direction. But then, back to the store. On October 8th and again on the 12th, the blog was updated with news of items to be added to the online shop. Classic racing movies such as Grand Prix and Le Mans, and secondly, RC tabletop cars will be added to the store. The movies were and remain classics, but the community was confused at the message of the blog. Was this a place to learn of updates for racing legends, or were they being advertised to and taken advantage of? Tony included a bit more information on the Ferrari 312. However, the wording made it sound like the progress on the simulator was only occurring on the side, stating he was able to get back to some modeling. 44 days went by without any official news from the Wests. Finally, on November 25th, Tony updated the blog once more. It started with an update again on the online shop, stating it had finally been opened. This alone would have caused all hope to abandon the community, but luckily the first lengthy progress report on the sim, as well as detailed shots of the Ferrari, were included. The West stated that the current physics model was feeling solid and that the transmission systems were coming into place. Maybe Racing Legends was more than a few renders and pretty artwork after all, but could it actually be driven? No sign of video or demos were to be found. The end of November came, and December progressed as well with no updates. The community became restless. In January 2003, it was announced that Tony's wife Susie would be taking over moderating their forum. They would institute a code of conduct on policing the speculative community. This was received extremely poorly. The community was being silenced for their enthusiasm and their hopes. Alongside this, Tony also decided to display their most promising simulator award from Black Home Motorsports in an article from GameFaction.com flaunting their potential, but nothing substantial to show. With the year concluded, many remained hopeful. The West seemed to at least be somewhat acknowledging that 2003 would be a big year for racing legends. In January, the silence was broken, and the blog was updated once again with a simulator update. More renders of the Lotus 49 and engine were displayed, and as ever, additional renders of the 312 and illustrative drawings of the unique rendering techniques to be used in Racing Legends. Something with substance. However, a new drama. Speculation arose on whether or not Racing Legends actually had the license to use the Lotus 49. Tony confirmed that no, they did not officially have it. However, they have had conversations with Classic Team Lotus, 
and Clive Chapman, the son of Colin Chapman. They had gone well. The blog was updated one more time in mid-February. More progress on the Lotus and even a shot of Westlake Speedway made an appearance. All seemed to be going well. And then complete silence. Months passed. Two months later, in late March, Tony gave brief insight to the lack of updates in a forum post. What many feared had come true. The West were out of money. However, they were not calling it quits. In a bizarrely public announcement and perhaps indicative of who the West were, they announced to the community that they were selling their houses to fund the project. Tony also publicly lashed out at the community proclaiming, there seem to be a number of people who, for whatever reason, take exception to what we are trying to do and take it all very seriously. We are absolutely the first people to say that racing legends should be taken for what it is currently, and that is simply words, pictures, and promises of what we hope to deliver. And words mean nothing. Some of the pictures are quite nice, I feel, but again, mean nothing. Until there is something to try, racing legends will continue to be words and pictures and should be taken that way. There are those who don't believe we can deliver what we say, but the fact is, we believe we can, and with the sale of our houses, we have staked everything upon it. Unless we try, we shall never know, and the only people that stand to lose anything, at the end of the day, are ourselves. The site fell silent again, and many assumed the West had come to their senses, kept their homes, and had given up on the project. In August of 2003, the silence was broken and Tony West was back with another update to prove that they were not abandoning the project. Over a year after their initial blog posts, they were back to sharing renders and updates on the status of various aspects of the sim. The physics team was implementing chassis flex and a totally new lighting system was being added to the sim to simulate time of day and weather effects. Once again, lofty goals for a three-person outfit. September 10th, another blog update came through and contained some of the most impressive and widely shared renders of racing legends. Tony described an idea of a courtyard scene where you'd be able to work on your car and where you could take and inspect your vehicles. Perhaps from climbing through the cars at Goodwood to take reference photography, Tony had developed an appreciation for the cars and wanted their sim to allow you to explore the expert modeling in detail. Imagine the scene as you roll out to your latest edition. The crunch of the tire on the gravel. The sun gleaming off the freshly polished paintwork. And the transporter waiting. The passion was there. And the community wanted to believe. Tony intended to make that dream a reality. On October 10th, he released another update, which showed the Lotus Team hauler in all its glory. Perhaps to the sigh of eagerly awaiting sim racers, time felt as though it could be better spent in other areas. But the vision of packing the hauler and working on your cars virtually, that was an intoxicating proposition. Tony also teased that Gregor had updated their physics model to be capable of simulating motorcycles, and although no renders or word if they actually would create motorcycles was included, the breadth of vehicles racing legends wanted to simulate was very apparent. The user interface was also underway, and one final enticing screenshot of the courtyard was shown. Hopes had returned for those eagerly awaiting racing legends. but it never came. Perhaps most infamously of all, the transporter update on October 10th, 2003 became the final official update for Racing Legends. There was one final comment from the West as a thread in their forums titled, Sorry. The thread went on to explain the reason they stopped updating. Initially frustration with the community, but potentially a lack of anything to show. And of course, funds. But they didn't say it was over completely. They just wanted to work more privately. The site fell silent and was left behind. Its amazing visuals have aged over time 
and it may not be as impressive as they once were, but their ideas and concepts are now standards in many sims. It's hard not to see many of the technologies and systems which they outlined live today in sims such as Assetto Corsa and iRacing, with their diverse selection of cars and increased physics complexities. In the aspects of maintaining and building a car, only modeled in something like My Summer Car, a project released some 14 years after the West first penned their design. There are even still some ideas remaining to serve as blueprints for Sims of the future. Today, Chris and Tony West are not easy to come by. Chris West can still be found on Twitter. Westracing.com remains active and still has much of the Racing Legends content on it. It appears Chris West now uses the site to host and sell various 3D plugin applications for Unity. Though, there may be a future for their sim racing ambitions. Max Speedy was first teased in 2017, and although there is very little information of what it could be, it does intrigue a curious look. So what was Racing Legends? Was there ever any truth behind the sim? Or was it some nice art, quality renders, and amazing ideas never brought together? Were Tony and Chris West visionaries ahead of their time? Or were they drunk with the thought of development freedom and eventually weighed down by a community and their own aspirations for perfection? Perhaps it's all best summed up with Tony's ending message from one of the early blog posts on September 18th, 2002. All we ask is that you simply take this for what it is. Namely, two guys trying their best to make something happen.